Who says Austrian school libertarians have to be statists on immigration? We should support government goons busting people's heads to keep them out of the country? Well, some have tried to make that case in the past. But now David Hathaway's hard-hitting new book, Immigration, Individual versus National Borders, refutes point by point every argument they've made. This is a short, well-written book that shuts down the closed borders argument once and for all. Immigration, Individual versus National Borders by David Hathaway. Forward by me. Buy it now on Amazon.com in both print and Kindle versions. All right, you guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Scott Horton, and it's my show, The Scott Horton Show. Anyway, um, I got Dan on the telephone here. Uh, Dan Sanchez from Mises Academy at the Mises Institute there in Auburn, Alabama, and regular writer for Antiwar.com and also uh, Antimedia, which I guess is Antimedia.com, right, Dan? Welcome back. Hi, uh, great. Yeah, antimedia.org, I believe. Dot org, okay. The, the antimedia.org. The antimedia.org. Okay, good deal. Yes. All right, now, so, uh, brand new piece at antiwar.com. Stop helping ISIS in its war on the gray zone. And then, even though it's the prequels, it is Star Wars, so you're kind of winning me over with your JPEG here, kid. You got, <laughs> uh, you got my main man, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the guy who knows right from wrong better than anybody, I think. Uh, trying to explain it to Anakin, who's going wrong. So explain it to me, Dan. What the hell's going on here? Well, the great uh, dialogue uh, there is Anakin says, if you're not with me, then you're my enemy. And then Obi-Wan answers, only a Sith deals in absolutes. And um, that is often thought to be inspired by George W. Bush, when after 9-11 he said that if you're not with us, then you're with the terrorists. Um, but actually, it uh, it was also seconded by none other than Osama bin Laden, um, that he said, uh, the world today is divided into two camps. Bush spoke the truth when he said, either you are with us or you are with the terrorists, meaning either you are with the crusade or you are with Islam. And by Islam, he means the extremist Islam that, that he represents, uh, that he, that the Salafists like him consider um, non-extremists to be apostates and, and not true Muslims. Oh, there you go. Yeah, how convenient for them. So now, um, you know, we could trace this back if you if you wanted. We could go back to 1993 and the beginning of Islamic Jihad's war, you know, basically Al-Qaeda's war against the United States then, but... We all have seen the, the results ever really through the 90s and especially since September 11th. But now you're trying to say in this article that this is what the Islamic State is doing right now with this Paris attack? That's right, uh, because th- that Osama bin Laden uh, quote was cited by an official ISIS uh, publication uh, called Dabiq, where uh, they were saying that... Um, that that development that both that bin Laden uh, was addressing was a great development, and it's what they wanted. They called it uh, the extinction of the gray zone, and so that the, by gray zone they mean the uh, gray area between, on one hand, um, what what they call the um, um, the Crusader camp and the camp of Islam. And um, and so what they want is there to be no gray zone in between the, the two camps, that both camps to be uh, warring against each other. And so they want both uh, um, moderate Muslims to be driven uh, towards the extremists and so uh, – and um, quote-unquote fake Muslims to be exposed as tools of the crusaders. And so they they don't want anyone trying to make peace, anyone trying to coexist. Uh, um, they, they want uh, the world to be just divided into just two warring camps. And so what Juan Cole, uh, an academic and journalist, believes uh, what he wrote after the um, Charlie Hebdo attacks back in January, um, he, he wrote that the, the strategy of these extremist groups 
is to what he called sharpen the contradictions. Uh, and so he likened it to a strategy of the communists, uh, of certain communists, where they would, they would do terrorist attacks in Europe, in, in Austria, in the early 20th century, in order to provoke police crackdowns on moderate leftists. And that was intended to drive those moderate leftists into revolutionary communism. And so Juan Cole believes that that's what groups like ISIS and al-Qaeda are trying to do, especially in France, because there is a large Muslim population in France, but they're not very uh, political, uh, especially not very uh, politically Islamic. Uh, a lot of them are, are just very secular. And, um, and so the, the, the problem they're faced with is, is how to drive them into uh, being radicalized. And so, uh, so the, the strategy is to provoke a crackdown on Muslims uh, in, in general, and then that will radicalize them. That is, so like you always say, the action is in the reaction. That, uh, that the, the terrorist attack itself is only phase one of the attack. Phase two is to elicit the, the pol police crackdown or the, or the bombing, the war crackdown on, um, on Syria and Iraq and other Muslim countries, uh, in order to radicalize, uh, Muslims and drive them into the extremist camp. All right. Hang tight right there. It's Dan Sanchez from the Mises Academy and Antiwar.com. Stop helping ISIS in its war on the gray zone, he says, at Antiwar.com today. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all, guess what? You can now order transcripts of any interview I've done for the incredibly reasonable price of two and a half bucks each. Listen, finding a good transcriptionist is near impossible, but I've got one now. Just go to scotthorton.org slash transcripts, enter the name and date of the interview you want written up, Click the PayPal button, and I'll have it in your email in 72 hours, max. You don't need a PayPal account to do this. Man, I'm really going to have to learn how to talk more good. That's scotthorton.org slash transcripts. Hey, I'll Scott Horton here for Liberty.me, the great libertarian social network. They've got all the social media bells and whistles. Plus, you get your own publishing site, and there are classes, shows, books, and resources of all kinds. And I host two shows on Liberty.me. I on the Empire with Liberty.me's Chief Liberty Officer Jeffrey Tucker every other Tuesday. And The Future of Freedom with FFF founder and president Jacob Hornberger every Thursday night, both at 8 Eastern. When you sign up, add me as a friend on there. ScottHorton.Liberty.me. Be free. Liberty.me. All right, y'all. Welcome back to the show. I'm Scott Horton. On the line, I've got Dan Sanchez from the Mises Institute and Antiwar.com. And yeah, the action in the reaction, Dan, I learned that from Will Gregg right after September 11th. He said, let's look at what the commies say about terrorism and what's the point. How does a weak actor, why does a, a weak group use terrorism against a strong group? What is the point? Just I hate you and I'm throwing a temper tantrum? Or, I mean, obviously you're not winning a battlefield victory against an army division by setting off a bomb that kills civilians somewhere or whatever. So what is the damn point? And, of course, the damn point is to get the victims to act when they're still mad and therefore dumb and hurt themselves. And all you got to do is just take one deep breath and stop and think about it for a minute. And the answer immediately should be not the George Bushing answer. Great. Let's see how many different ways and to what extent we can exploit this. But how can we be smart? And deny the terrorists the victory that they really seek, which is the reaction they want. You know, Robert Pape said on the show yesterday, they actually did deny Al-Qaeda the, the victory they wanted originally by not putting tens of thousands of troops on the ground in Afghanistan. Oh, but then they went and did ten times worse in Iraq, and so ended up, you know, doing... And then, of course, surging into Afghanistan and staying for 14 years and waging a whole separate war, just like they did one after all. But originally, they went light and fast and all that, uh, just in a way to deny the terrorists uh, what they wanted, at least in effect, maybe just because it took the military too long to get their ass in gear, and so they did it CIA-style instead at first. But anyway, point being... um this is what they're trying to do, is get the big, dumb American empire to destroy itself. And this is what the big, dumb American empire keeps doing 
Oh, and as you're saying, trying to radicalize the people of the West against the Muslims who live in the West and try to make us believe that they are the alien enemies among us when, in fact, they're no such thing. That's right, and it's working. That's the terrible thing is that um, uh, just um, as recent as the, the attacks were, you already – uh, the Paris attacks were, you already see signs of, um, Wong Cole called it, you know, being beastly to, to Muslims. Um, I mean, that's what the foreign policy of the West has been, being beastly to, to Muslims since, uh, uh, since the Afghan war. Uh, but, um, it's also ha- happening domestically, um, that, um, that there's signs of, um, rising Islamophobia in, um, in uh, both Europe and America, following the uh, following the attacks, and um, and signs of crackdowns. So they've they've already done um, a whole bunch of uh, arrests and ra- raids of suspects, and they're talking about dissolving uh, mosques and and even um, w- talking about interning pot- uh, what they call potential jihadists, the internment of potential jihadists, and. And like, how, how do you even, um, you know, determine that? How, how can you, you know, read someone's mind? Uh, it's it's all just um, a bunch of pre-crime, and what what that's going to do is um, is just end up with with the persecution of Muslims just for being Muslims, and that's just a recipe for radicalization. Mm-hmm. And um, and and it, and it's exa- again, it's exactly what. The, uh, what the terrorists want, and um, you you see, um, in in America, it it seems even worse because you uh, you have a lot of pe- uh, really ignorant people um, who who have never met a Muslim in in their lives, so their imagination can kind of run wild, and it's like a genocidal sentiment. I mean, they're, they're, uh, you'll you'll hear people uh, on social media talking about just you know nuking them all, just wiping out. All the Muslims, as if they were just one uh, undifferentiated uh, uh, camp, which is exactly you know what that whole eliminating the gray zone strategy is supposed to uh, is supposed to incite, and um, and just thinking of just Islam as as the enemy. Never mind that it's a you know religion of, of a billion people that only a tiny tiny mi- minority is is violent at all. And um, and that it's it's Muslims that are fighting these extremists. That that it's that it's Muslims that are that are in um, in Syria and Iraq that are trying to to actually eliminate um, uh, the, these extremists. And um, but but that just doesn't compute for them. Well, and of course, as long as especially American cops believe the propaganda that it's Islam that makes them hate us and that the clue to who is a threat and a terrorist is who's the most devout in their faith. Like You couldn't possibly hope for a more Bin Ladenite friendly script there for for the Americans to get caught up in. And of course, the alternative is admitting that this is because the Americans started it and that it's all about politics and war and real graveyards, uh, you know, and, and politics, go, uh, you know, power going on here. Uh, and they can't ever admit that. So th- as they're going to keep blaming Islam. And then so assuming the fake premise, what's an American cop supposed to do except monitor those who seem to be who who seem to really make sure to pray five times a day. I mean, that guy, he must be a real terrorist nut, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And that's that's the, the completely warped lens that they're looking at it through. And, in fact, you see, like, what just happened in um, in France. Uh, I'm sure, I assume anyway, they have the same problem as us. Their cops are busy spying on everyone instead of the guy who said he's going to do this. They're not watching him, you know. Right, right, and that that's another big development um, following the attack is that you can see just in the in the mass in the mainstream media just this concerted push of trying to push for encryption uh, uh, for um, uh, for um, to ban giving, uh, banning encryption. Right, I'm sorry, and um, and so 
and they're trying to to make the case that that Snowden has blood on his hands. That um, that the the reason why this attack was able to to go through was because uh, you know the intelligence agencies don't have the the tools uh, uh, necessary and. And this, and and so what they try to say is that um, that it's because um, of encryption, uh, because of Snowden revealing the tools that um, that uh, agencies have, that it it made the terrorists like go underground and and um, and avoid um, uh, calls that could be tapped and and um, and messages that could be intercepted. When, when that's just, that's ridiculous, as Glenn Greenwald points out, that um, terrorists have known from way before Snowden uh, did the leak that that they the government was able to listen in on their calls and and to intercept their their messages. And so, way before the leaks, they've been um, uh, aware of that. Uh, someone made made a joke that even the drug dealers on the wire knew knew. You know, not to use a, a cell phone, and um, and so it has nothing to do with that. But um, what the mainstream media is just um, uncritically just publishing these um, these anonymous leaks from American officials, saying that the Snowden revelations had a, a negative impact without any proof, without any evidence, and uh, and. The mainstream media just regurgitates that without even questioning. Come on, Dan. And, Your freedom uh, has been motivating and aiding uh, and abetting these terrorists all along. When are you going to stop? Right, right. And like you say, that, um, like what Snowden said in one of his interviews is that, you know, you're, uh, that mass surveillance is uh, making it harder for them to prevent attacks like this because they're so focused on um, getting the whole haystack, they call it, and um, and just you know mass monitoring everyone. That the resources devoted to that cannot be devoted to uh, actual you know detective work and actual you know tracking actual threats. Right. And um, and the uh, the actual threats are just getting lost in the cacophony of data that they have. Yep. Yep, and just like the FBI, you know, you could have guessed, I, I had guessed and said in more general terms, but then it turned out that literally the Boston FBI was in the middle of entrapping some dumbass while the marathon plot was being put together right under their noses. You know, this is, these are the people we put in charge of keeping us safe and, and of determining who the enemy is. And so listen, Here's the thing about it, everybody. I'm sorry. I'm very clumsy and, and, uh, doing a bad job today. But Dan has done a great job in this article. I hope you'll go and look at it. It's called Stop Helping ISIS in its War on the Gray Zone. And it's about how America's hawks are doing our enemies dirty work for them. And, uh, I might add that I think this audience will all agree with now's a good time to, uh, embrace Muslims in your community and let them know that you value religious freedom and their, you know, lives and freedom as well and whatever, and not let the hawks on either side take advantage of us civilized people in the middle. So thanks again, Dan. Really appreciate your time on the show, dude. You're welcome. Great to be on. Thank you. All right, y'all. That is the great Dan Sanchez. He is at the Mises Institute and antiwar.com. How do you like that? This one is called Stop Helping ISIS in its War on the Gray Zone. We'll be right back in a sec. Hey, y'all. Scott here for Samurai Tech Academy at MasterSamuraiTech.com. Modern appliance repair requires true technicians who can troubleshoot their high-tech electronics. If you're young and looking to make some real money, or you've been at it a while and just need to keep your skills up to date, Samurai Tech Academy teaches it all. And they'll also show you the business, how to own and run your own. Take a free sample course to see how easily you can learn appliance repair from MasterSamuraiTech.com. Use coupon code Scott Horton for 10% off any course or set of courses at MasterSamuraiTech.com. Don't you get sick of the Israel lobby trying to get us into more wars in the Middle East? Or always abusing Palestinians with your tax dollars? It once seemed like the lobby would always have full-spectrum dominance on the foreign policy discussion in D.C. But those days are over. The Council for the National Interest is the America Lobby, standing up and pushing back against the Israel Lobby's undue influence on Capitol Hill. Go show some support at CouncilForTheNationalInterest.org. That's CouncilForTheNationalInterest.org. Hey, all Scott here. The thing is, I need you guys to help me to get these download numbers up. 
So do me a favor and sign up for the podcast feeds of this show. You can choose the whole show or just the interviews at iTunes and Stitcher. All the buttons you need are at the top of the right margin at scotthorton.org. The more subscribers I have, the more iTunes and Stitcher will help promote the show to new listeners. If you're a hardcore fan, brand new or from way back, please leave them customer ratings and reviews, too. Trying to get these wars ended.